All right, y'all. For this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient, Carlos. And Carlos presents with a second-degree burn across his right forearm that he received at work. The patient tested positive for gram-negative bacterial growth and has necrotic tissue dispersed throughout the wound bed. Which of the following topical agents is the most recommended? So we have A, hydrogen peroxide solution. B, sylvadine. C, sulfamylon. And D is lidocaine. All right, so let's go up to the top here. Um, for those of y'all joining me right now, I'm telling you, these topical agents are always tough. It's always giving me a problem. Has it given you a problem? Because if it has, I bet you I know why. Because there's just like so many of them. You probably haven't really used much of them yourself. You haven't really seen them done. And then the other thing is it's so hard to classify these things. It's like, what do they really do? What do they really address? Some are for infection, some are for necrosis. Like, ah, it's just like a bunch of different stuff, right? Well, let's go ahead through this question and let me help you to dominate some of these. So it says, Carlos presents with a second degree burn across his right forearm that he received at work. So I'll slow up there real quick. It says second degree burn first. All right. And so to think to yourself, like what's kind of going on with that? You should be saying, okay, so that's burning through the epidermis and the dermis layer. All right. And it, it's across this right forearm. The patient received that at work. Okay, no big deal there. We just know that the patient has a second degree burn. Now it says the patient tested positive. All right, for gram negative bacterial growth. I want to stop there for a second too. I think that that's important. It is saying that the patient is testing positive for uh, gram negative bacterial growth. And gram negative bacteria, at least on the MPTE, you should be thinking of something along the lines of like pseudomonas originosa you may not you know really know how to spell that all right i was never good at spelling but that's something that you need to take a look at it's pseudomonas originosa it took me a while to learn how to say that that's one of the gram negative bacteria that are very common especially when a patient you know gets burned or has a wound um, they can they can develop this okay so the patient tests positive for gram negative bacterial growth and it also says that the patient has necrotic tissue that dispersed throughout the wound bed. So we know that there's some dead tissue that we need to do something about. All right. Now, the last sentence, the question stem says, which of the following topical agents is the most recommended? So it's going to be really important for you to do what? For you to pick out a topical agent that does what? That addresses the second degree burn. That's number one. That is going to address the gram negative bacterial growth. That's two. And a topical agent that's going to address the necrotic tissue. In order for you to get this question right, in order for the answer choice to be correct, it has to do all three of those. And that's really important. Don't mess up and just pick a topical agent that's addressing two out of the three. That ain't going to be the right answer. Does it make sense? So for those of you on the podcast right now, let me go through the answers again for you. It says A, hydrogen peroxide solution. B is sylvadine. C is sulfamylon. And D is lidocaine. So let's take the first one, hydrogen peroxide solution. Y'all probably know what this is. It comes in the, in the brown bottle, right? You got your hydrogen peroxide um, we typically use hydrogen peroxide on like smi uh, minor cuts, burns, that sort of deal. Um, it's an antiseptic, meaning that it helps to prevent infection. All right. One thing you need to know about hydrogen peroxide is it does actually go after both gram negative and gram positive bacteria. All right. It actually does go after those two and it can help uh, with infection, like I said, as far as like um, uh, decreasing any type of growth of that bacteria in the wound bed. So hydrogen peroxide, can it help with this situation? I like it. Could you use it on a second degree burn? Ah, you're probably going to cause a lot of pain to the patient. I think that there's better options. All right. If you use hydrogen peroxide here. I don't know how, how beneficial it is to really use hydroperoxide with a second degree burn. Um, but the piece that I don't like is the necrotic tissue. Like hydrogen peroxide isn't really going to do anything for the necrotic tissue. It's not going to help like break that down or do anything in that regard. And so I, I don't believe that a hydrogen peroxide solution is going to be our best answer here. All right. 
For those of you who are like cleaning nerds and all that and like to know what the little chemicals do, I'm telling you, there's a ton of videos online. I looked it up today, hydrogen peroxide, just seeing all the different things you can clean with it, your toothbrush, the toilet bowl, some of the stuff I didn't know. So anyway, uh, hydrogen peroxide, it could be used to clean your toilet bowl, but I don't know how good it'll be used in this specific situation. That's the moral of the story. We all good with that? Okay, let's go down to B. B is sylvadine. Now, in your text, this actually can go by a different name. And on the MPTE, it can go by a different name. Okay? Silver sulfadiazine is the other name that it could go by. So it's silver sulfadiazine or sylvadine. It's the same exact thing, just known as a different name. Okay? Now, I like sylvadine. Because sylvadine is a topical cream that could be used with, you know, burns, first degree, second degree, third degree. All right. So that's cool. It satisfies that piece. Um, sylvadine also helps with both gram negative and gram positive bacterial growth. So I like it from that perspective. Here's the deal. Sylvadine does not, I repeat, does not help with necrotic tissue though. It doesn't help to break that down. And so sylvadine is getting two out of the three things taken care of here, but not the necrotic tissue. And so I don't really like that as an answer. All right, I, th I think it's going to be a close second, maybe, but uh, it it's not the best for the necrotic tissue. All right, C. C says sulfamylon. Sulfamylon, again, another one of these common topical agents that can come up on the exam. It's a cream. Um, it definitely can be used for thermal injury, second degree, third degree. Um, usually smaller, though, smaller burns. All right. Uh, sulfamylon can be used for both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. All right. And it can be used for necrotic tissue. When you put it on, it can break down necrotic tissue as well. So it satisfies not one, not two, but all three of the different characteristics of this patient's problem right now. So I love sulfamylon. It's a great answer. Doesn't mean it's the right one. Let's take a look at D. D says lidocaine. Now, you may have seen lidocaine in a, a bunch of different, uh, you know, scenarios, not just topical creams, but maybe you've seen it as uh, an actual medication that we're just using for pain. Maybe it's used with iontophoresis or some type of e-stem unit, that type of deal. So lidocaine is a, um, a, an analgesic that we can use to what decrease pain am i right well here's the deal do we expect the patient to potentially have pain with a burn yes we do that makes sense but is that our primary impairment here is the question really talking to us about pain no all right does lidocaine help with bacterial growth no it doesn't does lidocaine help with necrotic tissue and breaking down that tissue no it doesn't so lidocaine doesn't really satisfy the majority of characteristics that this patient's presenting with, so I don't like it as an answer choice, all right? So that rules out both A, B, and D, leaving you with the final answer of C, sulfamylon. The final answer is C. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. There's a lot of things that we need to know about these topical agents in order to be, feel confident going on to the MPTE. I'll tell you one thing that you need to do is you need to be able to classify these things well. Classify these topical agents. Understand which ones deal with certain types of bacteria. Understand which ones are for infection, which ones are for necrosis and so forth. That's super, super important. All right. I want to tell you one thing, and this is a question that I just saw pop up. Like, okay, you told me about gram-negative bacteria, but what else is there, you know, when it comes to, like, gram-positive? If I ever see gram-positive, like, what is that? Well, gram-positive bacteria is related to, like, uh, streptococcus and staphylococcus um, uh, origin. Um, so staph and, and strep, I know those ones that you're, you're very familiar with. Again, they're types of bacteria as well. If you ever see gram positive, more than likely they're talking about staph and strep. All right. Um, and, and, and those can be definitely, you know, on the skin, living on the skin and then create an infection as well. So be ready for gram positive bacteria. 
Now, just an additional piece, just for your knowledge, sylvadine and sulfamylon, those are both what we call topical antibacterial or topical antibiotics, all right? And so, again, they're there to help fight infection, and typically they're really only used when the patient does have an infection present or some testing positive with gram negative, gram positive, all right? So that's another reason why um, that that rules in sylvadine and sulfamylon in this question is because the patient does present with an infection.